And it seems like there's a new twist to this whole story every day. This morning, no exception. The New York Times is now reporting overnight the Manhattan District Attorney's Office is considering criminal charges against the Trump Organization, though no decision's been made yet. It's all part of the case involving the president's former longtime lawyer. As we're learning, another confidant of the president, a publisher whose paper backed the president and slammed his opponent during 2016, is involved in this case, too. A pro-Trump tabloid for months before the election, its headlines hyping a win, its publisher, a longtime friend of Donald Trump's. Now, he's the one all over the news. We're talking about David Pecker. David Pecker. David Pecker was granted immunity. David Pecker sharing what he knows about hush money payments made in 2016 and who may have been involved in making them. Granted immunity by federal prosecutors, according to sources familiar with the matter. What are you doing to get ready for prison, Mr. Cohen? It's part of the Fed's case against Michael Cohen, the president's former lawyer who pleaded guilty this week to illegal campaign violations for paying off women to keep quiet about alleged affairs with the president. The Inquirer's cozy relationship with Donald Trump dates back years, well before he decided to run for office. The National Enquirer did a poll that's unbelievable that says I win. In 2013, Donald Trump praised Pecker as his pick to run Time magazine, tweeting he'd make it exciting. And during the 2016 election, Pecker and the paper reportedly bought rights to damaging stories about the then candidate, then never published. Like the story of one of the women who says she had sex with Donald Trump years ago, something he's denied. It's a practice known as catch and kill. Pecker even kept documents related to hush money payments and other potentially negative information locked up in a not-so-secret safe in his office, according to the Associated Press, citing people familiar with the arrangement. In an audio recording released by Cohen's lawyer earlier this summer... I need to open up a company for the transfer of all of that info regarding our friend David. Cohen appears to refer to Pecker and the payment in a conversation with the president. You never know where that company, you never know where he's going to be. Correct. So I'm, I'm all over that. In April, President Trump denied knowing about the hush money. Did you know about the $130,000 payment to Tony Daniels? Then this week. Did you know about the payments? Uh, later on, I knew. Later on. And Holly, as you mentioned a little bit earlier, now Michael Cohen has pleaded guilty. But yeah. now the Manhattan District Attorney's Office, which is a different office than the federal prosecutors, it, right. reportedly considering charges against the Trump Organization. What more what can you say about that? Yeah, on the state level there, Savannah, which as you know, it is a distinction. The New York Times is saying the District Attorney's Office in Manhattan is considering going after those criminal charges against the organization and two senior company officials in connection with these hush money payments by Cohen, citing two officials with knowledge of the matter. But both of those officials tell the paper this is still in the early stages. The prosecutors have not made a decision yet. So why does that distinction between federal and state matter? Remember, the president does not have the power to pardon people or corporate entities who have been convicted of state crimes. I've just heard back from an attorney for the Trump Organization who declined to comment on this story. Savannah. Lots of moving pieces. Hallie, thank you. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.